Uh, we off, ob obviously have been talking about what's happening in the stock market, but Rob Tetro has been with us this morning, and, and he's been looking at some of uh, the history lessons in the bond market around the time that you start seeing a transition to rate cuts and what investors can take away from that. Rob, let me bring you back into the conversation. Um, uh, you, you gave us a couple of charts, so we're going to show them to our audience. Why don't you walk us through what history tells us about the bond market and interest rate cuts? Yeah, well, thanks, John. The, generally, what we're seeing with history, if you look back at the time when we see these Fed cuts in a similar situation, you know, 59, 98, 2001, uh, back in the times when we've seen uh, the Fed cut, usually the market reacts, or the bond prices in the market react about a month before that first Fed cut, you know, one to two months before, and you, you don't really see big moves until you, you might see like a, you know, 50 or 100 basis point move initially, but then you don't see kind of the rest of the move till much after. And what we saw over the last three months, John, last time I was on, you know, we were talking about this, this bond yield movement. We saw a ton of movement. Remember when the bond yields went from 500, the, the, the 10 year went from 500 beeps to less than 400. It went to like 390 or something like that happened way, way, way before the first cut. We're, we haven't even cut yet. And here's this market saying, you know what? We are done with this inflation thing. Problems over. Let's wash our hands, call it a day, throw in the towel. But that's not reality. Reality is they were talking about a March cut. Oh, is a March cut going to happen? I never thought the March cut would happen. And now, oh, maybe it's May, maybe it's June, maybe it's so you can't get too far ahead of yourselves with these interest rate moves. And this year, this market, in my opinion, and in kind of the reflection there of the chart, got way, way, way ahead of itself, way, way, way too quick. The, um, the other question we've been getting, at least, you know, uh, thank you for that. Um, you know, the, the, the other question we're getting uh, on bonds is quite literally the question around investing in bonds right now, Rob. And I think, uh, uh, you know, um, what, what some investors might not anticipate is the kind of volatility, to your point, that we've seen in the world of fixed income, if you're using that as part of your, uh, the more defensive part of your portfolio. What seems to come up most frequently, uh, at least this is anecdotal in the conversations I'm having with experts like yourself, is um, if we are moving towards a rate cutting environment, which uh, theoretically would mean that the yields that are offered in the bond market today might not necessarily be offered tomorrow, when is the right time to think about adding bonds to the portfolio? Because if you don't get that timing right, it can impact your performance. So what, have you, what kind of conversations have you been having with clients? John, these are the conversations, this exact conversation about what the heck happened to my portfolio? I had 40% guaranteed investments that's supposed to be flat and stable and pay a 2% distribution. Remember two years ago, that's the conversation people were having when they got hammered to the tune of like 12% owning XBB or owning, you know, any bond fund in Canada. They just got crushed. They got killed and they thought they had this guaranteed component supposed to be inversely correlated with the stock market and yet market fell 20, my bonds are down 11 balance portfolio down 14. What the heck? So yes, that conversation I'm having a lot. We had a lot and we're seeing a lot of statements. Clients come in going like, why, why did this 40% fail me? Now, the, the second part of your question is, so that's kind of the conversation. The second part is, you know, when do you get in? I mean, it's a risk reward question because your opportunity cost in getting in now is a lot less than getting in two years ago. If you if you get in now and you're in a bond fund and you're yielding five and a half, let's say, with kind of global bonds or something like that, well, you know, if the market does 10 and you do five and a half, that's kind of an affordable that's an affordable opportunity cost. And then you measure that with your risk. And your risk is the likelihood that interest rates go the other way, that we're actually not gonna see a tightening cycle. We're not done or they stay flat for a while. And then you end up not making as much on your bonds as you thought you would. People that are getting into bonds now are playing the tightening cycle. And you know this is likely a good time uh, to, to start considering that. If you have no bond exposure and you want stability in your portfolio, probably a good time to be considering that. 